Hi guys, I know it's been a while since we've done notes this way. I would prefer to have you in class to do these, but the weather seems to have other ideas. So we're going to do just section four on video like this today. Your homework after this will be page 147D, numbers 31 through 40. All right, that will be posted on Google Classroom, as will the completed PowerPoint. Um, the lecture is just as important as these words on the screen, so make sure that you are listening and writing. If you need to pause this to finish writing down the slide, feel free to do that at any time. Let's dive right in. This section is about acids and bases. Our textbook circles around to acids and bases again. So this section is just a very brief introduction to acids and bases. We will circle back around in Chem 2 next year to go more in depth with pH calculations and things such as that. So very surface level content today. Arrhenius acids and bases, that is one categorization of acids and bases. There's also a different categorization called Bronsted-Lowry, which we will discuss next year, as I said earlier. An Arrhenius base, an acid, well a strong acid, is one in which virtually every single molecule dissociates or separates into its individual ions when dissolved in water. So it breaks down into a hydrogen ion and whatever anion that hydrogen is attached to. So hydrochloric acid becomes hydrogen ions plus chloride ions. Okay, the hydrogen breaks off and completely separates from the rest of the substance. Strong acids behave as strong electrolytes. When they are introduced into water, when they are dissolved in an aqueous solution, the cation and the anion, the hydrogen and whatever anion it was bonded to, separate completely and they can conduct electricity. So here we have hydrochloric acid being dissolved in water. The hydrogen is completely separating from the chloride ion. Arrhenius acids and bases. A strong base is a metal hydroxide, so a metal bonded to an OH with an extra electron, that's where the minus charge comes from. They have to be completely soluble in water so that the hydroxide ion and the cation, the metal that they are attached to, completely separate. The most common examples are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide because they completely dissolve in water. They are very soluble. Um, barium and calcium are moderately soluble, so they are moderate bases. Um, sodium and potassium dissolve very well in water, so they are strong bases. Arrhenius acids and bases. The products of an acid-base reaction. A reaction between a strong acid and a strong base are water and a salt. Now, I mean a general ionic compound, not table salt. Now, table salt can be generated if you use hydrochloric acid and, so and sodium hydroxide but that is just one ionic compound. Water will be produced as well. The net ionic equation of an acid-base reaction is always hydrogen ions plus hydroxide ions yield water. The cation and anion, the um, chloride and sodium, if we were doing hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, the sodium and the chloride would still be aqueous. They would still be floating around, so they are spectator ions and are crossed out. They are not part of the net ionic equation. The reaction of a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion is called an acid-base reaction. Any reaction in which a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion combine is going to be some kind of acid-base reaction where the hydrogen ion is considered the acidic ion and the OH minus the hydroxide is the basic ion. So here we have a summary. I know you have a lot of writing on this slide, so feel free to pause it. So I'm just gonna read through it. You go ahead and write it down at your own pace. The common strong acids um, are all aqueous solutions. The three most common strong acids are hydrochloric, nitrate, and nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. A strong acid is a substance that completely dissociates or breaks down in water into its hydrogen ions and its anions. A strong base 
is a metal that is attached to a hydroxide compound that is very soluble in water, so sodium and potassium. It breaks down into its cation and its hydroxide ion. The net ionic equation for a reaction of a strong acid and a strong base is always the same. It shows the production of water. A hydrogen ion plus a hydroxide ion yields liquid water. That will always be the net ionic equation. The reaction of a strong acid and a strong base, uh, one product is always water, and the other is an ionic compound called a salt. It remains dissolved in the water, but if you evaporate that water away, you can obtain the salt that is created. So that is how salt is mined. Um, out in Utah, near the Great Salt Lake, the Morton Salt Company pumps water out of the Great Salt Lake, lets it dry in a um, evaporation pond, and once all the water evaporates away, they dig it all up and purify it a little bit and then put it in those little round containers that we buy at the store. And our last bullet point for the summary, the reaction of a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion is often called an acid-base reaction, where the hydrogen ion is the acidic ion and the hydroxide is the basic ion. Here is a question wanting to know what is the correct net ionic reaction for nitric acid and lithium hydroxide. Well, if you remember from the previous slide, the net ionic equation contains only hydrogen ion and hydroxide ions. So the correct answer must be letter C. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Remember, your homework is page 147D, numbers 31 through 40, all. That will be posted on Google Classroom as well. This will be due whatever day we return back to school.